these mysterious objects be proof that aliens really have abducted human beings? We're going to uh, perform surgery to remove uh, foreign objects from individual bodies who believe that they have been abducted by aliens. We'll scrutinize two of the objects at a state-of-the-art materials testing lab. We believe that we have a definitive physical evidence that the abduction phenomena is real. If you don't make that claim, then show me some evidence. It's a debate that has little middle ground. Debunkers are not helpful. Their agenda is to show that this is simply not happening without having any knowledge of the subject whatsoever. Somebody showed up with any objective data that an extraterrestrial existed and had been to Earth. We would love it. Do these objects prove that aliens are here and that they're kidnapping people? Well, we don't know what they are yet. Perhaps we will find out. Now the theory of alien abductions put to the ultimate conspiracy test. Dr. Lear has brought the Cullen object and a second one he removed from the toe of a California nurse to one of the most advanced labs of its kind in the world, the Materials Science Lab at the University of Toronto. If Dr. Lear's objects prove to contain materials or technology not available on Earth, his discovery will be one of the greatest scientific coups of all time. Department Chair Dr. Doug Perovich will oversee tests to determine if the objects Dr. Lear has extracted from his patients could be of extraterrestrial origin. Looking at uh, materials, be they being terrestrial versus extraterrestrial, uh, a lot of the evidence uh, I'd say would be the thermal history or thermal mechanical history of, of that component. The first step is to look at the composition and structure of the object or tiny device removed from Tim Cullen's arm. If it was created by alien technology, it might contain isotopes not found in earthly materials. Dr. Lear, we're going to start with testing in this instrument, which is a field emission scanning electron microscope, uh, which will give us a fingerprint on the elements that are in there. Any transmitting device is likely to have telltale signs of its purpose. Circuitry, perhaps some kind of sensing device, pathways for information. The first test is to determine what the sample is made of. There seems to be something uh, in the bottom of those depressions. It's possible that it's, uh, it's biological tissue since uh, that will, will not conduct as, uh, as well as the, uh, the sample can. The electron microscope can magnify up to a half a million times. That is unbelievable. In addition to the structure, the microscope can detect the chemical makeup of the object. As you can see, there's a whole series of peaks uh, I mean, that's, that's quite complicated. Could, couldn't you have brought something easier to look at? Next time. All right. In the Materials Science Lab of Canada's University of Toronto, a remarkable experiment is being conducted. Dr. Roger Lear, a California surgeon, has come here with two objects he believes may have been implanted in ordinary Americans by alien kidnappers. An object he removed from the toe of a California nurse. With evidence of calcium phosphate. It's interesting how we have this sharply defined feature with, with this sort of uh, casing of, of, a, of a more random, uh, rough surface. Department Chair Dr. Doug Perovich has been asked to determine if Dr. Lear's objects could be of extraterrestrial origin. Between what's unusual here is, is how straight these boundaries are. Uh, I, I find that quite interesting. If the suspected implant was not made on Earth, a mass spectrometer will reveal isotopes not commonly found on this planet. 